today. So today I'm going to show you how to deal with this type of questions. So I call this level 2, right? So if you haven't yet done level 1, if you haven't watched my video on level 1 and level 2, it is going to be on the description below this video. So you will find the link in blue and when you click it, it will be the video of the first and the second level. It's very important if you know those ones, uh, you're going to be getting most of these type of questions correct. And then this one is just a little bit in another level. So you have to watch the first video before watching this one so that you can understand the methods in and out. So this is in level two, right? Remember the multiplication stuff? So when we see the multiplication stuff, what do we look for? The x-intercepts. So when we check, we'll only find one x-intercept. Then we can draw a vertical line. So let's draw a vertical line there. Okay, so where the graph uh, touch it, so that's where the vertical line is supposed to be. So the graph is separated, the Cartesian plane is separated into two groups. All right, so now what do we do to the signs for both of them to be positive? It means it has to be a positive times a positive or a negative times a negative. Now let's check in group one. The problem is in this particular portion, the other graph does not exist because in the inverse, your y-intercept is the asymptote if your x-intercept was asymptote in the original. So the graph basically does not exist after the asymptote, so we cannot compare it at this point. So we have to start from after the asymptote, right? So this portion there, still in group one, so this portion, so we're not yet past the red line, we're still looking at group one. So this portion which starts from zero to one. Let's check. You will find out the y value of this one is positive, the y value of this one is negative. So does it fulfill? No, it doesn't. So if this one does not fulfill, obviously the next one will fulfill. But let's let's check it. The y value of this one is positive, the y value of this one is also positive because they're both above the x-axis. So this one does fulfill. So if we describe the x values, it means it starts from 1, right? x is an element of, it starts from 1 until infinity. Infinity always has a curve bracket. So it starts from 1 until infinity, right? And then now, here, is it square or curved? Well, the question says greater or equals to 0, so it is uh, a square bracket. So be sure to watch the first video that I put before watching this one. Just before I continue, if you want to be tutored, either online or physically, online it doesn't matter where you are or which country you are at, you can still be tutored. So we offer cheap online lessons. And if you want to be tutored physically, we can still make an arrangement. So call or WhatsApp this number, but preferably, please WhatsApp uh, this number. And then we will take it from there. So what I do is that I tutor people uh, five days a week online. And I give tests once a week so that I can check your improvements. And then now let's look at this second one. So for it to be less than zero, what must we do to the signs? It must either be a positive and a negative or a negative and a positive. So remember we cannot check this part. Always remember that you can't check the part where the other graph does not exist. So, after the asymptote, right, there is this small portion there which is still in group 1. Group 1 has been split into two parts because of the asymptote, right? So, the other part we can't use it, but this part we can use it. So, in this part, the y value is positive, here the y value is negative. Does it fulfill? Yes, it does. So obviously, if it fulfills, the next one will not fulfill. So remember, we checked, we found that it was positive, positive, and uh, it fulfilled the first question, but it does not fulfill for the second question. So now let's describe this portion. So x is an element of, it starts from 0 until 1. So let's talk about the bracket. The 0 cannot be square, even though this one Okay, if, if the question was having an equal sign, let's just say it was having an equal sign also, right? The zero cannot be square even though the question has 
an equal part because it's an asymptote. Whenever you have got an, asympt uh, an asymptote, even if the question says greater or equals to, the asymptote will never have a square bracket. So since this is an asymptote, asymptotes always have curved brackets just like infinity. Right? Whenever something is an asymptote, even if in the question they say equals to, it will not have a square bracket. I changed it because I wanted you to know this part. How that whenever you are dealing with asymptotes, even if the question says uh, greater or equals to, it cannot be uh, a square bracket. But if there's a number instead, and you know that number is an asymptote, that number is included, right? So it is a square bracket. And if the question had no equal sign, of course this was going to be a curved bracket. Remember something that belongs to the asymptote, right? Remember it's an asymptote of this graph, right? When we look at the original graph, the asymptote is the x-axis because y is equals to zero. That's the line of, uh, that's the asymptote. Sometimes the asymptote can be, can be one, right? So since the asymptote was y is equals to zero, in the inverse, the asymptote will be x is equals to zero. It switches. It now becomes vertical. I hope you understand that. So this is the asymptote of this graph. That is why. So that is why it has a curved bracket. So asymptote has, always has curved brackets, whether it's like this, whether the question is like this, or the question is like that only. It will still have curved brackets, just like infinity. And if you like my video, please subscribe to my channel so that you can keep on receiving uh, things like this. I'll keep on sending uh, hard things. Let's just say so. But this is not hard. This is easy. See you.